I'm Terry Owens. Welcome to Conversations with T.O., where our guests share how they're making life better for themselves and others. You know, like a lot of kids growing up in Detroit, I wanted to work in the music industry. I wanted to be the guy in the room mixing the music. That was my plan. But I think it was Mike Tyson who said, we've all got a plan until we get punched in the mouth. My punch in the mouth was electrical engineering. Someone told me I'd need a degree in electrical engineering to have my dream job. Well, I could barely pass algebra, so I knew that wasn't gonna work. But I figured I'd just find another way. So I volunteered at the campus radio station. I thought that might be a way to get me closer to the music. They told me they didn't need any DJs, but they did need someone to read the news on Friday night when everybody was going out to party. Well, I took that volunteer job and it introduced me to the world of journalism, which in turn led to a 20 year career in television news. I shot for the moon, I hit a star. What's your challenge? What's your punch in the mouth? What's the thing that's standing in the way of you and your dreams? If public speaking is your challenge, the Owens Media Group would love to help with that. You can shoot me an email. Let me put my address up on the screen. That's terry at owensmediagroup.net. Terry at owensmediagroup.net. We would love to help you deal with your challenges around public speaking. And now to our guest. She is an educator and advocate for struggling readers. Let me pull her onto the screen and say hello to Brittany Selalebe, author of Etymology Rules. Good morning, Brittany. Good morning. Thank you thank so you much. No, thank you so so much for joining us. So right off the top, let, let's deal with this big word that perhaps not everybody knows. What is the study of etymology? Etymology is the study of the origin of words. And as you may be familiar, ology is a suffix that means study of. So you think about psychology, biology, etc. cetera. Etym comes from the Greek etymon, which means true. So really it's the truest sense of words, meaning where words come from. Okay, study of words, we got that. When did you discover your love of words? Oh, um, <clears throat> I probably discovered a love of words when I was maybe like in first grade. I remember having the opportunity to write a sequel to a fairy tale. And my teacher did like a, a little in-class publishing of, that, of those stories. And I said to myself, I want to be an author. I want to write books. Mm. Um, Fast forward, maybe about high school, I, I had a teacher who did a unit on etymology as well. And fast forward to my adult life, I connected with an etymologist who really drove home the importance of understanding words and language and literacy. So that's the trajectory. All right. So tell us a little about your journey into the field of education then. And did you always know you wanted to be a teacher or were you just going to be a writer? I actually wanted to be a lawyer from the time I was probably 12 till my senior year of college. Um, I was on the debate team. I, I was argumentative in a good way and probably sometimes not in a good way. And so uh, everybody in my family told me you should be a lawyer. Um, and then I remember my senior year just falling out of love with that idea. And I said, I don't know what I'm gonna do. I'm about to graduate. And just something kind of hit me and said, you should, you should be a teacher. And I worked for an alternative school and tutored a young man to get his GED. And just seeing the excitement that he had after being able to pass the test after our tutoring, let me know that was what I really needed to do with my life. Mm -hmm. You know, in this, um, in this place and time, you would think that, uh, Reading literacy wouldn't, shouldn't be a challenge in our country, but it is still very much so a challenge. Tell us what you're seeing out there. Yes, I have, so I teach middle school and I purposely choose to work with secondary um, and secondary education because I think 
we're seeing a lot of funding and a lot of resources and attention go to early childhood. I, I guess the idea is that, you know, let's provide the, the right and effective education and instruction at a young age. So by the time they get to middle and high school, there are less struggles. But everyone always forgets that there are students who didn't get caught, who passed through the cracks in elementary school. And so um, what I see is middle school students who have trouble decoding, that means sounding words out. I see difficulties with comprehending. So I have some students, they can read a whole passage beautifully. And then when you ask them, what is this about? Or you ask them comprehension questions, they're at a loss. Uh, I see a lot of students who just aren't reading, and I think a lot of that has to do with difficulties, and some of it has to do with just not finding interesting, great books. But there are ones out there, and that's part of my job, too, is help promote um, the books that I think students, or connect students with books that I think that they would enjoy. Hmm. Has technology helped or harmed uh, in our desire to get more people reading? Well... <clears throat> It's twofold. In some ways, it's helped. We have access to more audiobooks. And so there's a debate about if you listen to an audiobook, did you really read the book? But what I think is great is that students are engaging with literature. Even if they have difficulty reading the text themselves, they can still engage and they utilize that. The flip side is, you know, there's so many other things to do that are more fun and flashy and engaging watching videos. Students tell me, oh, I don't need to read a book. I'll just watch a YouTube video to learn something, you know. So we're up against that. Obviously, social media as well. Mm. Well, you are using technology in a way. You've got your own YouTube channel, and uh, it's a perfect vehicle for, for educating. T tell us what you're doing there. So I started a, the Etymology Rules Show featuring myself as Miss B. And actually, my sidekick, Ori, is my goddaughter. Um, and so I just wanted a way for young people to learn more about words and language. I think young people are sponges. Their brains, they're so curious about things. So even though I love teaching middle school, I also wanted to tap into that younger age. And so it's an animated show. And... You know, we have a theme each episode and uh, children walk away with um, more words in their lexicon um, after watching the show. I love that. I love that. Um, and, and some of the other trends that we're seeing in reading literacy, where's it going? How are we changing the way we approach this, this uh, subject in a way that we're seeing some progress? So there's actually been um, what they call the reading wars for many, many years. And the reading wars is what is the best way to provide literacy instruction? So it's really um, a swing between what they call whole language, which is where students, the, the, the goal is to understand what you read and fall in love with reading. So that really puts an emphasis on comprehension and there's less of a focus on decoding or sounding out words. And then the other side of the coin is decoding and putting in phonics being a major emphasis. And the argument there is, well, if we only focus on phonics, the kids can decode, but then they can't comprehend. Mm -hmm. um, and so, like I said, it's been a swing back and forth. So I would say from about 2000 until 2020, the emphasis had been whole language. And there are a couple of programs and educators who have been promoting the whole language method. But during the pandemic, when parents were at home with their children and seeing them learn, they realized that their children were not learning how to sound out words. Mm -hmm. And so there actually was a big New York Times article that came out about a couple educators and their programs, one of them being Lucy Calkins from um, Teachers College, Fontes and Pinnell. If you ever, for those who have young children, if you ever heard your children say, you know, I'm on the R, the P, or the Q level, that's Fontes and Pinnell. So they do like leveled readers, but part of their training, they say it is not necessary to teach children to decode, which is just absolutely incorrect. So um, research has come out and uh, centered around the science of reading. That's probably a, a buzz term that uh, educators hear all the time, but it's just the idea that phonics, 
fluency and comprehension are all necessary for strong literacy instruction. And I think with that becoming more um, well known within schools, you're starting to see some schools shift to incorporating more of the phonics and the decoding. Mm. Are you happy with where we are today or do we need some sort of drastic um, improvement in this area? I still think we need a drastic improvement because the one thing that's really missing is within teacher education and teacher training programs, there really isn't a big emphasis on learning the foundations of language in order to then teach a child how to read. So I... I do a lot of study on my own anyway, because I just am very interested in words and language, but I, I earned my second master's in reading instruction about three years ago. And my first master's is also in education. And it was really on a, with a focus on reading as well. And it wasn't until my second master's that I was in a program, excuse me, a class called word study. And it just taught me about phonemes, graphemes, morphemes, about how to teach kids how to sound out words into different syllables, et cetera. And that is not what most teacher prep programs are offering. So while I think it's great that we're understanding how literacy instruction works, I think what comes next is there needs to be a connection between language and linguistics and literacy education. And that's really what my book serves to do is to teach teachers and parents about the fundamentals of language. Mm. Let's talk about etymology rules, back to basics. Uh, when was this seed planted and tell us how it came to fruition? Oh, wow, this seed was planted probably about 10 years ago um, or just, just about 10 years ago. Um, like I said, I just, I realized that from all the things that I was studying on my own, it really didn't match up with things that I saw teachers understanding and what I had experienced in my teacher prep program. And so, and I've always said, I wanna write a book. I didn't think it was going to be a workbook, um, but that's what it turned out to be. And I just really enjoyed doing the research, um, getting feedback from my peers and from my friends. And so it took me a long time. It took me uh, about six and a half, seven years to write. Wow. Uh, between working and, a tutor on the side and all the things, but you know, finally uh, came all came together in about 2020. And fun fact, my school was the first school to make a major purchase of it, and it was our summer reading book. And um, to this day, you know, the teachers tell me that they find it really critical, and they utilize some of that information in their classes. That's fantastic. That is so, so, so wonderful to hear. Now, have you made the circuit? Are you out uh, at the various education conferences uh, promoting the book or how are you getting the word out? That is my 2024 goal is to do more work outside of, you know, the area where I am. I think in D.C. I've promoted quite a bit, but I want to spread this to other areas. So there are several uh, reading organizations and educational organizations that have conferences. Doing more vending is also a goal of mine this year. Uh, but actually my, my main method of promoting the book has been social media. And so, um, you know, I have Instagram, I have TikTok, and I do these root word of the week videos. So this week's root word is bell, bell, means to fight. So words like rebel and belligerent oh. um, and antebellum. And so I share one of these each week. Uh, I think people really gravitate to it um, in the world of social media where there's so much drama and chaos. I think for some people, it's refreshing to see something instructional. And then from there, they want to know more. So then they can purchase the book. It's on Amazon. So I love that. And using videos to to uh, promote that work, I think, is is really you're on to something there. So so keep doing that, because uh, I don't know if it's the journalist in me that just has a fascination with words. But um, uh, I love that. So let's talk about the role of parents in this whole process. Um, you know, um, 
my mom had a seventh, eighth grade education at best. And there wasn't a whole lot that she could do to support me other than just encourage me to get it. Uh, how do we help parents uh, better support their kids? So that is another goal of mine via the book is so that parents are educated so they recognize. Um, I'll give you an example. I had a student I was, I was testing. Um, his parents reached out to me because he had some reading struggles. And this was virtual. So the parent was in the background and I asked the, the child to read a word that had SH, which is a digraph that says shh. And I heard the parent in the background trying to help, which they weren't supposed to be doing to begin with. Um, but they were saying, well, S says S, and H says, so just put it together. What is that? And I was saying to myself, no, that's not helping. It's making them more frustrated, right? And so I think a big part of it is like parents understanding language as well so that they can uh, reinforce at home. But I think it's also... Sim I tell people the simplest thing you can do is just have your child read for 20 minutes every day. I mean, that is not the solution to everything. You know, there's several other elements, but building stamina, building familiarity, being exposed to words, taking your child to the library, um, having your child see you read. You know, it could be nice where I've seen some families have a no tech Tuesday, for example. So all the electronics are away and then we're sitting as a family, we're reading, we're discussing what we've read because I think it's another big part of literacy, um, just making sure we comprehend by asking questions about the text. So I think just these are little things. Again, I don't ever expect a parent to be the teacher teaching their child everything that is our job to do as teachers, but reinforcing uh, through those ways is really critical. And what advice do you have for teachers who it's their job to know this stuff, but, um, you know, their plates are full and uh, some may lack the patience. I, I don't know. I, I hold teachers in the highest regard. I, I think what you guys do is tremendous work, but uh, we can all use some advice, some counsel, some guidance. What, what advice would you have for teachers? Yeah, I, I think that teachers have a really hard job, particularly when their background is not in literacy. I always say that literacy is not just the English, doesn't just belong in the English department. I think in some schools, when I say I, I want to help improve literacy, they direct me to the English department chairs. But the students are reading in all your classes, even in math. They have to read the word problems and comprehend it in order to solve the problem. So it really is about educating yourself on how literacy instruction works. And I, I know that's a heavy lift for some because you're right, we're super busy. I mean, on top of just teaching and grading and supervising children, we have duties and phone calls and et cetera, et cetera. But I think as teachers, we are promoting learning, meaning we have to be lifelong learners. And even myself, every year there's something that I want to get better at, I want to know more about. So it just makes me the, the best teacher I can be. So I would encourage teachers, um, you know, in the, in the year coming up, if you find that you have children who are struggling with reading and you uh, don't know what to do, then seek out resources and just take the time, it might mean for you reading 20 minutes a day, right? We tell the, teacher, the students to do it. Teachers, you read 20 minutes a day and read books about language and read books about literacy. And I guarantee that you know, you'll gain some methods that can really help your students in their class. And finally, uh, what advice would you give to aspiring educators or people who, who've thought about perhaps going into the field uh, and, um, could perhaps use some encouragement as you hear about some of the challenges that teachers face. Yes, you know, I wish somebody had told me this, but I think about the first five years as a teacher is really where you're just learning how to be a teacher. You're learning how the system of education works. I think it was probably my most difficult time as a teacher, but I think if I knew going into that, that this is like the time for me to learn and develop. 
Um, I, one thing that helped me is that I have great mentor teachers. And I think veteran teachers are always eager, very eager to assist and give advice to the new teachers. So I would just say, you know, connect with a veteran teacher and learn from them, but also find your own path, find your own way, because, you know, I think the best teachers are ones who just really are truly themselves and find their best way of teaching. I think students can tell when, you know, you are in there and you're trying to fake the funk. I think when you are yourself, they truly uh, open up to you. And that is what the best learning comes from students who are open. Well, I love that. And Brittany, I would love for people to be able to connect with you. How, how can folks get in touch with you? So if you want to reach me by email, I'm at etymologyrules at gmail.com. And as I mentioned earlier, I am on social media. So you can find me on TikTok. I'm on Instagram as well. The YouTube show is actually on a page called ATP Kids. I've partnered with a group called Appraise the Phrase, who is a podcast on where phrases come from. And so we we partnered to create the Etymology Rules Ch Children's Show. Again, that's ATP Kids on YouTube. Fantastic. Brittany, thank you so much for joining us today. I knew I was going to enjoy this conversation and I walk away feeling inspired and, and know that our kids are in good hands. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. All right. And that's going to do it for this episode of Conversations with T.O. I'm Terry Owens. And remember, as we say each week, press on toward your dreams. There will be some obstacles, but find a way to enjoy the journey. I'm Terry Owens. Have a great day.